ever wonder about words? I mean, recently, one of the words that's been driving me crazy is physicality. Rather than structuring a sentence to physical play or he's very physical, all of our sportscasters now use the word physicality, which I'd never heard used before. And it's one of my little hot buttons. If you really want to have some fun, look up the word avocado. Hey everybody, this is Tony Tominick and Jerry Spencer. And it's a minute of history or 15. And now I think, <laughs> Sherry, what episode are we on? You know, can you believe this? We are on episode number 32. And despite that cease and desist letter that we got, we've continued anyway. Yeah, the heck with them. They can't <laughs> stop us. They don't have enough, they don't have enough technicians on the internet <laughs> to pull you and me off the internet. I can tell you that right. That's right. Us and all seven of our regular, faithful, devoted. Oh, I think we viewers. have eight now. I think we have eight. I talked one of my cousins into watching it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you don't have a family, what do, what good is it? You know, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me about what we're going to do today. Well, let me tell you. The other day, when I proposed to you a fabulous idea, and you told me that it was hogwash and poppycock. That caused me to begin thinking about the origins of some of these sometimes peculiar phrases that we hear. So I thought maybe today we could talk about some of those phrases. What do you think? I think it's a, an extraordinarily good idea. You don't think it's hogwash? No, no, not at all. <laughs> because, you know, that was the name of the swill that was fed to the swine and no nutritional value to it. Kitchen refuse and scraps, especially the liquid form stuff, was used as food for pigs. And they call it hogwash? Hogwash. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it was also an expression later on that was used for inferior alcoholic drinks. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few of those, but I never called them hogwash because when yeah. I, any drink was a good drink in my book. It, well, there you go. <laughs> So anyway, the word took on the modern meaning of nonsense. Yeah, well, that pretty much holds true, correct? Nonsense, worthless, ridiculous, nonsensical. You know, the, the, the things that you called my brilliant ideas. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. And then there's the expression sleep tight. Have you heard of that one? Well, I have slept tight. <laughs> because, you <had> <laughs> because you had too much hogwash? Because I had too much hogwash. And I have awakened and I was still tight. <laughs> That's not where this expression comes oh, from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it appears that this goes all the way back to probably Shakespearean days. Wow. And it's in reference to beds. When they used to use a bed frame and they would take rope and they would make a crisscross fashion with the rope onto the bed frame. Oh. That would support a, a mattress, which was really nothing more than like a giant pillowcase stuffed full of straw and the people would sleep on that. And then as time went by, you know, it would start to sag in the middle from the weight that was dragging down on the ropes. And so to, to make up for that, the owner of the bed would have to tighten each of the rope places until the the ropes were taut again and would fully support the mattress well, and that's where the term sleep tight comes well, from and that makes complete sense because then way uh, you know you, you don't want to wake up in the morning laying on the floor with those <laughs> all the webbing loose you know so you it would be a good night's sleep if you if you slept tight correct yeah well you know if you had your bed frame up high enough it might feel like a hammock yeah that's true that's true and if anyone visits our Peter Miller House Museum, they will actually have the opportunity to see one of these beds because we have got a rope bed there. Well, we'll have to get pointed out when people come tripsing through or tiptoeing through the tulips, so to speak. <laughs> there you go. So next expression, how about over a barrel? 
Now I can relate to over a barrel because coming from a family that owned a, a, a tavern, um, <laughs> we we had wooden barrels. We had wooden barrels all over the place, and and I was uh, I think I was actually bent over a barrel a couple times. Uh oh. Yeah, it was, it was a more of a punitive thing from my father. Was some corporal punishment being administered? I think it was major punishment. Not, <laughs> it was higher than corporal. <laughs> well, there are actually a couple of theories uh, as to where this phrase may have come from. And the first one is that people used to think that you know, this is before CPR. People used to think that if you pulled a, a drowning victim out of the water and wanted to try to resuscitate him, that you would lay him over the barrel and then rotate him back and forth. That was supposed to get the water out of his lungs. Although, I, as I understand it, water doesn't really get into your lungs. It, it, was, um, it was a remedial method that rarely, if ever, worked. Well, we have to try that this summer. Who's, who's going to be the victim? Well, I'm not going to volunteer, but I was thinking, you know, you seem to raise your... <laughs> I'm not volunteering for that. So, so let's move on to the other theory of okay, the okay. barrel and where that may have come from. And it actually kind of sounds a lot like what you were just describing in that it was a form of punishment that was administered to people where they would lay them over a barrel and strap them down and flog them. I have definitely been flogged on the, over a barrel. <laughs> so you've been <laughs> over a barrel. Yes, and back in 1955, that was probably okay. Yeah, probably was. Probably yeah, should yeah. still be, but it's not. No, it's I'm just not, kidding. Yeah, no. <laughs> don't, don't send me any emails or letter, okay? No, no. Well, we don't care. We just want to, you know, there's either, doesn't matter what kind of headlines you make, bad or good, because it just, more people come to watch our videos. Yeah, but I don't want any more of those cease and desist letters to you. <laughs> no, 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 you're right, you're right. <laughs> so, so let's move on along to oh. ironclad. To what? Uh, ironclad, you like that expression? Yes. Ironclad? Well, I remember from the Civil War, the monitor and the Merrimack. You know what? You, you actually got this one right. Were you trying? Or that just came no, out? no, it just... By nature, I'm a genius. Okay, well, you have just exposed your genius to all of our viewers. Our oh. viewing audience is oh. impressed. <laughs> so you're right. That's exactly where Iron Clan comes from. Is that right? It, originally, it was a very literal uh, definition. Iron Clan battleships were covered in iron and impenetrable. And the meaning became, uh, it took on a new meaning of rigid or strict allowing no penetration, something so strong it could not be broken. So now you hear ironclad contracts, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm guessing that nobody knows where that comes from. I mean, it just so happens that uh, I'm brilliant. <laughs> Stop it. Glad you pointed that out. Yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try one more, shall we? All right. How about the expression barge in? You, maybe you know this one too. You might. Well, if you're on a dock and you're trying to get the barge in, no? No, you you are on the right track. No. You're absolutely on the right track. So the origin goes back to the awkward steering characteristics of these barges that would bang into ships or piers or what have you. And people would say that they barged in. And it kind of kept that meaning and now it's usually people who barge in, but that's where it comes from. Gosh, and a lot of words that you don't that you hear and sayings that you hear, and you wonder where they where they had their origin. Um, I've looked up a few in my day, but I certainly because I'm old now and feeble, I don't remember any of them. <laughs> <But> <laughs> anyway, if you think that my ideas are hogwash, it's not going to bother me. So I'm going to sleep tight, because if you have to take over scripting these videos, then I've got you over a barrel. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a fun one to edit out. <laughs> well, as always, uh, Mrs. Spencer, 
you are a, a bubbling floor, a fountain of knowledge about useless information. And until I see you on the morrow, cool. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. This is Tony Tominick and Jerry Spencer. We'll see you next time on a minute of history. Kentucky Sky. Oh.